We come before you tonight with grateful hearts for the work you have done in our lives. You have carried us through much and have promised to always stay beside us. Thank you for the people you have placed in our lives, our families, our friends, and all of those who have taught us these last 12 years. We pray that you would continue to strengthen us and guide us through life as we go into the world. Bless this night and our fellowship. In your son's holy and perfect name, we pray. Amen. on behalf of the junior class. There were so many things I wanted to say. But as I sat down to write this speech, words failed me. So uh, it looks like this will be a pretty short speech. Oh, I'm kidding. That's what thesaurus.com is for. In all seriousness, though, as I searched for a word that could communicate how much you mean to us, well, it's enough to say that God has blessed you so diversely and so extensively that it's nearly impossible to pin down one word to describe you. To me, you have been friends, encouragers, and a supportive Christian family. To the junior class as a whole, you have been unmatchable examples. To the school, you have been passionate leaders. In everything you did, you cared, and, and it showed. You were always dedicated in athletics, using your God-given skills to the fullest potential. You were equally dedicated in your worship, whether you were leading chapel or debating theology at the lunch table. In the classroom, you were eager vocal participants, maybe even a little too vocal at times. And in the halls, well, suffice it to say, you were always a lively lunch. Even when a global pandemic interrupted your junior year and persisted through your senior year, you persevered and made the most of every opportunity you could get. So seniors, I cannot find sufficient words to say what a joy it has been to know you. All this said, tonight is both a night of great celebration and great sadness, both personally and on behalf of the junior class hard to say goodbye. Some of you will be moving to the other side of the country, while some of you will stay in the area. But no matter where you are, I fear the halls will seem emptier and certainly quieter without your presence. Yet I am certain of two things. First, the impact you've made on this school will linger long past your, your graduation. The impression you've left on my class and the underclassmen is more significant than you know, and God will use that in unexpected ways. Second, you will carry your enthusiasm, your dedication, your talents, and your faith where, with you wherever you go, and the world will be better off for it. So though it is hard for me to say goodbye, I am honored to say thank you, and may God always bless you and keep you. On behalf of the class of 2021, thank you. Thank you, SCS community, for pouring in time, energy, and encouragement into this class. The past four years will not have been possible without the many people that make up this community. The unique relationships built around the school have proven to form a community. Having their vital role in the lives of this class, I would like to thank the teachers. Thank you for obeying God's call to use your gifts of teaching to support and provide growth in us. Your intentional investment in our lives is evident through the way you persistently challenge us while also diving deep into creating relationships with us. Most importantly, 
Thank you for the way you exemplify Christ and for your true desire to build a strong foundation for our faith. I also want to thank you parents. You have walked alongside us in our journeys for the past 18 years, seeking to guide us in our walk with Christ. I know we have not thanked you enough for the countless hours you've invested and the sacrifices you have made. You have dealt with our bad attitudes, encouraged us not to procrastinate homework, braved the cold and long games, and continue to support us in our faith. We truly appreciate it, and thank you for being the godly examples many of us look up to. Throughout the past four years, some times have seemed to fly by, while others have seemed to never end. However, I know we have made unforgettable memories and friendships that will have a lasting impact. The freshman surprise, Grace and Kendra's two popping at senior retreat, Jack's friend Mrs. Meyer's room with carbonated water, and Sammy D falling out of the canoe at Sylvania, and then covering himself in pine needles, just to name a few. Coming into high school, I know both the SES and OCS classes were not the easiest and caused several teachers to leave or retire after our classes. Even though we were known as that class that many of the high school, or high school teachers probably dreaded, we also have been a class of high involvement in the school. Each member of this class has their own gifts, which have been used through chapel, sports, play, forensics, student council, yearbook, volunteer opportunities, and sharing their God-given qualities with others. I encourage you to continue using your gifts in your churches, colleges, and communities with the goal of serving others and bringing God glory. This past year, we have focused on Colossians 3 verse 12, which reads, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. This verse serves as a call for God's children to live out the characteristics of our Heavenly Father seeking to be a light, pointing to Christ through our words and actions. Looking back on the past few years, these traits have been evident in the lives of each individual in our class. The quality of compassion is visible in Grace, Ellie, Maya, Eliana, and Jack. The attribute of kindness is noticeable in the lives of Maddie, Sam, Stephen, and Gabe. Humility is evident in Ashlyn, Ian, Ben Boko, Kyle, and Ben Parts. The trait of gentleness is clearly exemplified in the lives of Paige, Jamie, Hannah, and Levi. And finally, patience is evident in Chloe, Sequoia, Sammy, Aiden, and Bryden. Let's keep working to grow in these attributes, seeking to shine through Jesus in all we do. As a class, we have chosen Hebrews 12 verse 2 to be an encouragement to both the school community for next year and to us as we leave SCS. I pray that this verse will act as a hope-filled reminder to fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Because of the work of Christ, we are clothed in his righteousness. Therefore, let's joyously and humbly fix our eyes on Jesus, living to worship and tell the story of God's goodness. Know that Jesus is the source of all we need as he endured the cross for the joy of set before him, which we are included in. Live in light of the truth that your future is secure in Christ. As you walk away tonight, remember that you each have distinct contributions to add to your communities and people around you. God has gifted each of us, so let's be stewards by serving his kingdom. Run to the Father, keeping your eyes fixed on Christ. Hey mom, I know we're getting old And the lines on our hands have changed But you still look at me the same Hey mom, guess what? You're real, they talk And I know you 
did all you could Just to make sure my life was good Sorry for the fights and the tone of my voice Sorry for the nights when I made the wrong choice Life is flying by and it's in me now I hope it's not But If this is the last time, please come close I love you with all my heart, you know I don't wanna cry, I'm bad at goodbye If this is the last time Then let's do the things we always do Hey Dad, what's up? Miss you so much. Yeah, the shade of your hair has changed, but I look up to you the same. Taught me how to fish, taught me how to ride a bike, taught me how to love, how to treat a woman right. Life is flying by and it's in me now.
where I live Hope that you spend your days But they all add up
Tonight, our speaker is someone who has made a huge impact on my life as well as many others through his work at Camp Calvin and by bringing the word to many of us while we were very young. This is something I will forever be grateful for. Aaron Bach was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. After some prodigal years as a young adult, the Lord got a hold of his heart at a small prayer meeting in June 2006 and set his life free, life on a new course. Aaron has served as a discipleship and worship leader at Christ Community Church in Sheboygan for the past 10 years and is transitioning to ministry at the International House of Prayer in Kansas City this summer. While we are sad to see him go, we are so happy for him and his family in this next chapter of serving God and his people. His wife Kendra and sons Asher and Titus are the joy of his life, and his passion in ministry is to see the next generation raised up as radical followers of Jesus. Please help me welcome Aaron Bach. Get started, uh, Greg Ingalls. Where, where are you sitting? Uh, do you think you could get some construction noise going back here? Because it'll just help me be more comfortable. You know, there's nothing like a jackhammer to make you focus spiritually. John, I'm saying fire up the scoopy thingy. Fire up the scoopy thingy. Anyway, that's a joke about chapels in this past year. <laughs> Seniors, soon to be graduates, I am honored to be asked by you to be your speaker tonight really take that role seriously, so thank you for that. We've heard a couple times already from Hebrews chapter 12, verse, the key verse 2. I'd like to read it one more time with the, the verses around it in context. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Graduates, I'd like to start this evening by telling you that you were made for more than this world and this culture can offer you. Or as C.S. Lewis said it, if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. And that is the truth of this text, and you have chosen well to make it your graduation verse. I would like to give you four simple directives from this passage of scripture to encourage you this evening. The first one is run intentionally. Run intentionally for the long term. You notice the word perseverance or another translation says endurance. Run with endurance, with perseverance, the race that is marked out for you. Run intentionally, focus, casting aside the sin and distraction and complacency and discouragement that hinder us. And yes, you will face all of those challenges in one way or another. But you are called to run with perseverance. In this passage, the Christian life is pictured as a long distance run, not a short sprint. One of the best pieces of advice from a spiritual leader that I heard in my young 20s that has stuck with me, he said, set your goal as a Christian as faithfulness for decades. Not a few months, not on mission trips, not when the spiritual high is still lasting, but decades of faithfulness. That's radical. Anyone can do something kind of exotic and exciting for a little while, but to be faithful for decades, that is the call of a Christ follower, and that is what we see here in Hebrews 12. Now we also have 
the picture here of an athletic contest in a great amphitheater. This was a familiar picture for the Greek listeners, especially at the time. And in Hebrews 12, the stands are filled with the heroes of faith that have gone before. Now they are not mere spectators. They are faithful and inspiring examples that are watching as we run the race of faith that they once ran. And we see in that crowd, in that group of witnesses, of spectators watching us run, we see some who receive great deliverance in this world. Moses leading the people across the Red Sea. Noah and his family surviving the flood. And we saw that God and his power came through for them in this age. And we also see in that cloud of witnesses those who were sawn in two. Those who were imprisoned and even martyred for the faith. And both groups in that cloud of witnesses bear testimony that God is faithful. And he will not leave us. He will walk with us. And he will do the marathon run with us. He will grant grace for us to do it faithfully. And we have a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on. So first, run intentionally. Secondly, start and end well. Now this goes for small matters and life-altering matters. As Christians, as followers of Christ, we should do what we do well, with excellence. Live with vision. Set forth goals for your life and then do it faithfully and see it through to the end. I am concerned that Christians are becoming way too wimpy. And I don't mean wimpy that we can't stand up and make our voice loud. Anybody can do that. I mean that we can stay with it when it's hard. That we can remain faithful. That we can live with purpose when there's a million distractions around us. So graduates, as you step into your adult life, and increasingly you set the tone for the way you live, start and end well. Start and end your work day well. Start and end a job that you have well. And such a crucial part of this is integrity. Is doing the right thing with excellence when nobody else is watching. Jesus spoke so often about doing what we do in our, our spiritual lives, the way that we live out our faith, knowing that our Heavenly Father is watching even when nobody else is. I think about the, one of the joys of serving in a smaller church over the last 10 years is that I've gotten to see such faithfulness by people that, whose names will never be known by most, who probably will never be asked to stand in front of the microphone, but they are faithful in what they do. They do it with excellence and with integrity. They do it like it matters, because it does. And graduates, be that kind of people that lives right when nobody is watching. The French pilot and writer Antoine de saint Excupere. Try to practice that one, boy, that's quite a name. Well, listen to this beautiful quote about living with vision. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to gather wood, divide the work, and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. So in other words, while you do the sometimes mundane work to which you will be called, and there is a place of humility where we take our part as a spoke in a wheel of something bigger than us. And yet do it with vision, knowing you are living before the eyes of your God. And you honor him when you start and you end well with what he's called you to do. Thirdly, and really most importantly, set your eyes on Jesus. You know, so much has been invested in all of you to get you to this point. 
families, your parents, your extended families, your churches, this amazing Christian school community. But you know what? It is impossible for us to prepare you for every single contingency that could happen in your lives. But what we can do, and what we hope that has come through the most clearly, is we would point you to the one who will be faithful no matter what comes. No matter what season of life, no, ma no matter what challenge, personally or in your life circumstances. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. He is the one who knows. And as the scripture says, he is the author and the finisher of our faith, or the pioneer and perfecter. What, is, what does a pioneer do? They set out to gain new ground. They set out on a new venture. Do you know what Jesus has done with you? He chose you before the foundation of the world to redeem you as one of his own and to glorify himself through your life. That's what's at stake here. But he is the one who started it. And he is the one who will finish that work in you. The, the word perfect, very often when it shows up in the scriptures in the Greek, what it means most literally is complete. So when it says that Jesus is the finisher, the, the perfecter of your faith, or the finisher, it means he will bring it to full completion. What he begun, what he pioneered in you, in placing faith in, in himself, he will see it until it is complete and glorified himself through them. In other words, your journey starts and ends with Jesus Christ. Fourthly, remember Christ's suffering. He did not quit. He completed the work of salvation by his atoning sacrifice on the cross. And then he exercised his victory over sin and death through his resurrection and ascension. And we see in the testimony of Scripture that as a human man, which he was fully, as well as being fully God, that that was not easy for him. He felt the weight of his calling to give his life as the perfect ransom. But he did not quit. He saw it through for your sake and for mine. Something that I've learned as a follower of Christ over the years is that you never outgrow the cross. I used to think in a more linear way about it. Well, yes, you have to believe in Jesus and accept his sacrifice. That's your entrance into the kingdom. But what else do we move on to now and learn about? Now, the knowledge of God is a vast ocean, so don't hear me wrong on that. But what I have found is that all theology, all truth about God hangs on the cross. It's like a peg stuck in the wall and none of the other theology works. None of the experience of walking as followers of Christ work unless we come again to the cross and we remember what he has done on our behalf. If you guys remember Spiritual Emphasis Week, right? I brought in a, a real heavy beam. And, that, and that, that's Jesus' language, not mine, that said every day you pick up that cross beam of yours and you die to yourself and then you will experience the new life that I have for you. So we remember that Christ suffered perfectly and he invites us into suffering because he is shaping his image more and more in us through. And then the last part of, of Christ's suffering. Remember that there was a joy set before him. Now that was his glorification at the Father's right hand. But you know what? He started there. In between, he redeemed us and invited us to be seated with him as sons and daughters of God. So his glory and inviting us into the story was the joy set before him. And when you are discouraged in the years ahead and face struggles that are overwhelming, remember the joy set before Christ that caused him to endure the cross so that we could belong to him fully and securely forever. As I was preparing for this, I, I asked the Lord if there was a story that could help to bring this home for us. 
And just this week, uh, a story came into my inbox, and I'll close with this this evening. And this is the story of Rocio Pino and her husband James. They're believers in Colombia, in an area controlled by the armed revolutionary forces of Colombia, also known as FARC. Late at night on March 6, 2011, they had a knock at their front door. There were two men standing there who asked if they could give them a hand with their motorcycle. So James put some shoes on and stepped outside with, with one of the men to take a look. Rocio stood there by the door and one of the other men stood right by her. He kind of tensely asked her, is your name Maria? And she responded, no, I am Rocio Pino. The man then pulled out a gun and shot her three times in the chest and then fled on a motorcycle, on that motorcycle with his friend. Emer emergency workers wouldn't come to their village because it's too dangerous because of the guerrilla forces there. So Rocio died that night about 10 years ago. Rocio was known for sharing her Christian faith. In fact, she was once quoted that said, quoted as saying, anyone who comes around here, in other words, to my village, they're going to hear about Jesus. And she knew the risk. You see, the shooting was in retaliation because Rocio had shared Christ with a young female guerrilla fighter. And they were upset with her. But she had her life vision. She had her eyes fixed on Jesus. And one of the aspects I love about her story, even compared to other martyr stories, is that there wasn't this long imprisonment in which she could express all of it. She had just lived faithfully. And in a brief moment, the Lord called her home and she bore witness to him in that moment. Now I realize that's the extreme end of faithfulness. But we can't guarantee that some of us in this room will not die for this faith. But as that cloud of witnesses where we started at the beginning of Hebrews 12 and Rocio Pino, all of them come out bearing witness, you will find him faithful. So graduates, as you set out on this journey, there are many who are cheering you on including those who have gone before and those in this room. And I can guarantee you before your journey is done, some more of us in this room will be cheering you on from the cloud. We will be praying for you. We will continue to offer you guidance. We will extend you plenty of grace as you make some mistakes, and you will, and it'll be okay. As you navigate the course of this lifelong, marathon pace, heaven-bound excursion, my younger brothers and sisters, keep your eyes steadfast on Jesus Christ, the pioneer and the perfecter of your faith. And we who walk alongside of you in that same journey, We'll be praying for you and supporting you in full confidence, knowing that he who began this good work in you is most assuredly faithful to complete it. Amen. will present the diplomas. Levi Everett Alice. Eden 
Kevin William Thomas Valent. Joy Gartman. Eliana Esperanza Gonzalez. Chloe Athena Gordon. Gabriel Joseph Gitaski. Samuel Christopher Hendricks. Maya Ashley Hopewell.
Paige, Christine, Warmest. Madison Page Zylstra. I now present to you Sheboygan Christian Schools Class of 2021. to the Father. We invite you, our guests, to join in. The words to the song will appear on the video screen.
Will you pray with me? Lord God and Heavenly Father, we come to you on this night of celebration uh, with the class of 2021 of Sheboygan Christian School, and we are reminded of your faithfulness to us. Father, you are an amazing God, and you have truly blessed each one of these graduates. I pray the foundation that was laid at home, at church, and at Sheboygan Christian School will be a strong foundation for each grad graduate as they begin the next chapter of their lives. I pray these words of 1 Timothy 6 over these graduates tonight as they go forth into the world. You are to do good, be rich in good works, be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for yourself as a good foundation for the future, so that you may take hold of that which is truly life. Father, I thank you for this time that we are able to spend together this evening, and I pray that you will bless us as we depart from here. I pray this all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 